Welcome to another episode of Facts, Figures, and Fallacies from the Frontline Podcast. Today's episode is the eighth wonder of the world, compounding interest. And this is an awesome topic that Mitzi's going to dive into. But before we get started, please give us a like, subscribe to our channel if you enjoy our content, and feel free to comment below with any suggestions on podcasts you'd like to hear about uh, in the future. So without further ado, Mitzi... Tell okay. us all about compounding interest. Sure. So compounding interest is the eighth wonder of the world. Those who understand it, earn it. Those who don't, pay it. So that's a quote from Albert Einstein, but fortunately we don't need to be Albert Einstein to understand it. It is so, so important. So we wanted to go ahead and talk about it today. You, you know this. You just don't think about it. A lot of people don't think about it, you know, often enough. So... This will be kind of a refresher, kind of a reminder. We're going to look about. We're going to look at how compounding interest affects um, our property taxes, our investments, uh, everything money related that we do. Compounding interest affects it. So you always want to have this this concept in the back of your mind. So I'll I'll start with a question, and I'll say if I were to give you five five million dollars thirty days from now. So I'm going to give Nick $5 million 30 days from now, and I'm going to give Jessica a magic penny, and that penny doubles once a day for 30 days. <laughs> Who's got more money in 30 days? What would you rather have, the penny or the $5 million? In 30 days? In 30 days. And it doubles every day. The penny doubles every day. I can't do that. Mm. <laughs> Just take a wild guess. I'm going to guess the penny is better, actually, but it doesn't sound like it would be. <laughs> I feel like it's like maybe $100 at the end of 30 days. You would think so. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the math that you would think. Okay, so, but yeah. so, so if you want to see these numbers, we're attaching this, the slides um, to the podcast. But if you look at day 30, so we started on day one with one penny. It doubled day two, we have two pennies. Doubled day three, we have four pennies. All the way to day 30, which is on the right-hand side, we have $5,368,709.12. So this is just the impact, just to get you thinking about how important compounding interest is. And obviously, the earlier you start, the less you need to invest, the more you're going to end up with. And I'm okay. looking at these, making sure they're all only, only doubling. And they <laughs> are. They are they only are. doubling. It's and, crazy. And five million dollars. So, how so, quickly it goes from one thousand three hundred ten uh-huh. to the five million. Right. Well, <laughs> and that's another good observation. So the the longer in time that you go, the more significant this mm-hmm. is. So if I started, you know, if I started when I was Nick's age, uh, with an investment, mm-hmm. and at my age, my investment would really be, you know, great return. I would really be getting good returns. Where mm-hmm. at his age, you know, you may be investing every year and you feel like you're not making as much progress as what you want to make. You just have to stay at it and just keep mm-hmm. going. And then you'll see these mm-hmm. exponential returns later on. Okay, so let's look at how compounding interest affects our property tax. This is an issue that we recently had, uh, we were trying to, For us here in Wise County, Texas, we were doing a a bond proposal that would increase the the, uh, tax rate, property taxes in Wise County, uh, specific to Decatur. And we got a lot of questions as as to what this would look like. And so I, I prepared a little spreadsheet and it'll be linked in the comments below. You can download it, you can play with it, you can change the numbers. It just kind of gives you a good way to calculate what this property tax increase looks like over the next 10 years, or or a property tax increase looks like over the next 10 years, just because of the compounding interest. Okay, Um, so I took an average property of $350,000, and I said the combined tax rate is 1.73 and um, that gave me a tax of $6,067, so we'll just say $6,000. Okay, so that was for the year 2022 or 2023. And what does it look like if my appraised value increases at a rate of 10% per year over the next 10 years? 
which I believe is highly likely, but I hope that doesn't happen. Um, that's your appraised value. We've seen that in, in our area over, over the last several years, and our property, um, our property values have increased probably by more than 10%, and that's a great thing if you're selling. But if you're not selling, your property taxes are getting very, um, getting to be a very, getting very expensive. Mm -hmm. So this um, is just a way to kind of look at the property taxes, uh, what they're going to look like over the next 10 years if our appraised values continue to increase um, at 10% per year. And remember that we have a lot of built-in increases that we haven't seen yet because we're capped at 10%. If we have a homestead exem exemption, we're capped at 10%. So let's say four years from now, our appraised or our market values in Wise County don't increase by 10%. They only increase by 7%. Well, if we haven't used up all of our built or, you know, our built in uh, market appreciation where it's in excess of the appraised value, we're still going to get these 10% increases. So that's why in this example I said over the next 10 years, our appraised values increase at 10% per year. Mm -hmm. In the first column, um, I'm showing you what that looks like if the property tax rate stays the same as what it is today. We would double our property taxes in about eight years. So we would pay twice what we're paying today in the next eight years. And then in the second column, you can see what you would pay if the bond had passed. This particular bond has not, uh, did not pass, but if it had passed, how long would it take for your property taxes to double just in this scenario? And I'm just giving you the formula so that you can play around with this and just better understand the impact mm -hmm. that a property tax increase and even these appraised market val or appraised value increases, the impact that that has. And, and that helps you to understand um, what uh, size house maybe you want to be living in as you retire. Um, you know, the older you get, the, the smaller house you need, and maybe you want to get the in a, a house that doesn't appraise quite so high because the impact um, of these continued appraised value increases is very significant. Specifically in Wise County, I'd like to say... Um, yes. So... Your house, not only is it based on square footage, but if you have stone versus brick versus siding, they take all of those things into account. And specifically here, stone is one of the most high rates. So if you love that stone house, like you will literally pay for it for the rest of your life. So it just, <laughs> dep yes, <that's> right. <laughs> it just depends. Um, that is something to consider, though. When you're building your house, you might want to get with your county to see what tax rates will look like. Or if you add on to your house, mm -hmm. then your 10% cap doesn't apply. Right. So all, all of those things are, are, are things you need to consider. Yes. So just uh, download the spreadsheet, plug in your own numbers, plug in your own tax rate, depending on what area you're in. And you can kind of see, you know, this is my rate this year. My property taxes will double in eight years or under this new bond proposal. So in this case, 6000 would turn to 12000 in seven years. So every seven years, my property tax will double. Mm -hmm. So, you know, look at your income, look at your salary. Is your salary going to double every seven years, every eight years? If it does, then this is probably not an issue for you. But mm -hmm. if, you're, if your income is not doubling as quickly as your, your mm -hmm. property taxes and other household expenses, then it's something you just really need to think about and really consider. And Jessica had a good point about consider the... Um, the value of of the house that you're building mm -hmm. because the more expensive especially in the state of texas the more expensive house you build you will pay for it for the rest of your life mm -hmm. now not to go off on too much of a tangent here but you know this is pretty specific to texas and pretty specific to wise county um and so my understanding is that the way that property taxes should work would be as more people move in to this to the county to the city the rate should actually decrease a little bit to right. help with this issue, correct? That's correct. And the rate should decrease, but it just is not decreasing. Yeah, <laughs> and I was so, going to say that's... So you <laughs> get people taxed out of their homes very quickly if something doesn't change. So I think right. that's why we had so much kickback on the bond issue, and it's just something everybody has to consider. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, we need better facilities, but it's got to be affordable, 
and think about the exponential increases. They're overwhelming, in my opinion. Okay, so it applies to property taxes. And then it also applies to, let's say, Starbucks and bad habits. So if you're, um, if you just love a, a good steaming hot chai tea latte in the morning and you go to Starbucks, you're going to spend seven bucks for a venti. Mm. And, and I factored in a little inflation too, in my example. So, so if I did that every day, 365 days a year, um, $7 a day, I would spend $2,555 in a year. Um, the opportunity cost, if I had invested that money versus had that bad habit, even at a 10%, my opportunity cost is $2,811, okay? Again, in the beginning, that doesn't sound like a lot of money, and it's not a lot of money, but you compound this over time, and I, in my example, I did it for 10 years. So if you don't look, what do you think that cup of coffee costs you over a 10-year period at a 10% investment? Five million. <laughs> Five million is not quite that high. What would you guess, Nick? Well, I already looked, so now it's hard for me to guess. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to guess 66000 <laughs> That's guess. right, 66000 So we spent $40,000 on that bad habit over 10 years, and the opportunity cost of that was $66,270. So just mm -hmm. by cutting out that one little addiction. Mm-hmm. You're up sixty six thousand dollars, <laughs> so you can you can use this um, compounding interest. That's why the quote from Einstein said, "If you understand it, you earn it," because it can be a positive. But if you don't understand it, you're just paying it, and you just don't realize that you're paying it. Okay, so another place that you could pay that, um, and we see this a lot with our clients, is people are sitting with excess cash. Well, this. Mm -hmm. um, until recently was not an issue because your excess cash invested was earning you 1%, half a percent, 0.2%. Well, now you're getting on a three-year treasury yield 5.33%. Mm -hmm. So this example looks at, let's say you had $10,000 in excess cash every year and, and it's adjusted for inflation, just say 10%, it grew 10% a year. So the first year, you had 10000 extra dollars. You just left it in the checking account. It didn't earn any interest. Next year, you had another 11000 extra dollars. The next year, 12100 extra dollars. And you just left that sitting in your bank account. And we see this all day, every day with our clients. They may have two, three, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 sitting in a checking account earning nothing. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't been a big deal because there was nothing to earn. Well, now it's getting to be a big deal. So even in a three-year treasury yield, 5.33% is huge. Um, so in the first column, year one through 10, 159,000 is how much extra cash you put in the bank. Most of our clients have 159,000 sitting in the bank. Mm -hmm. They never use it. They're just, it's just extra cash and they don't move it out. Okay, so we're talking about excess cash and what to do with your excess cash and the impact that just leaving that excess cash in a checking account, a non-interest bearing checking account when interest rates are high like they are today, what that, the impact that that has on your finances and that's just the lost opportunity cost. Mm -hmm. So I did um, in this example, I just did uh, a, a, a three month treasury bill. Um, those are yielding 5.33% as of yesterday, um, if you just left over a period of 10 years, you just left that sitting in a bank account, you would have generate or you would have um, saved 159,374. That's um, 10,000 10, a year, increased by 10% each year. So that's actual excess cash you've generated through your business and it's sitting in the bank and you're not um, earning any interest on it. So someone looking into treasury bills, mm -hmm. when you put that cash in, you cannot take it out for three months, right? Right. So if you have $150,000 sitting in your checking account that you're not using at the moment, what would you recommend um, someone do? 
how much of it should they put in that treasury bill? Well, it depends on your individual situation and how much you need in your emergency fund. I'm super uh, aggressive. I don't keep an emergency fund. I use a line of credit. If I ever get in a bind, I would Mm -hmm. pull off the line of credit. And then as the bills matured, I would pay off the line of credit. Mm -hmm. But if you want to be safer than, you know, and depending on what your monthly expenses are, then you're going to have a larger emergency fund. But I don't like to leave. I I leave very minimal sitting uninvested at any time. Okay. So it would depend on the nature of your business if you might. And your risk tolerance. Have a vehicle go out or... Yeah, and your risk tolerance. Exactly. Right, right. So any anyway, in this example, um, the excess cash uninvested, you have one hundred and fifty nine thousand invested. Even in a in the smallest three year treasury, I mean, you, you can get that even in a uh, some banks are paying probably five percent right now in a money market fund. So you can get that rate very easily. Uh, the over a 10-year period, it's 206000 That's 47, and we're talking about $10,000 per year. Mm-hmm. So that's $47,000 in lost opportunity cost. And on average, that'd be almost $5,000 a year that you're just foregoing. Mm-hmm. So I always recommend keep your, keep your um, business checking account balance as low as you can get it. And you could use a sweep mm-hmm. account you know, where all of that excess cash is swept and invested and then brought back over as needed. Right. So -hmm. so something that we haven't had to pay attention to that I think people need to start paying more attention to, leaving those heavy balances in a non-interest-bearing checking account. Okay, and then one last thing is the rule of 72. Everybody had this in school, but you forget to apply it. So this works best if you're... um, calculating at rates of 6 to 10%. So if somebody said, you know, if I um, invest, well, my first example is the 5.33%. So if I invest at 5.33%, how long does it take me to double my money? And what would you guess? <sighs> Wild guess. Like five years? Five years to double your money at 5%, what yeah, would you guess? Yeah, I guess maybe more like, I'll say 10 Okay, 13.5. Okay. So, because that's a low rate. So, 5% compounded annually, um, it would take you 13 and a half years to double your money. So, if I want to double my money, I'm getting older and I don't have 13 and a half years to double my money, and I say, well, I really need to be doubling my money every seven years. Well, then I need to be investing according to this estimated formula, and it's really pretty accurate um, in the 6 to 10% range. I would need to be investing at 10%. That way I can know that I'm going to double my money every seven years. Mm -hmm. And so to be clear, the formula is just 72 divided by the interest rate. 72 divided by the interest rate. So I could say 72 divided by 10, 10 years, I would double my money in 7.2. 72 divided by 10 is 7.2. Okay. So that's just a quick, easy way. And and it's good to look at it and good to think about it because it, it... It's a a quick, easy way of seeing the difference that just one percentage point makes. Mm -hmm. So the quicker you want to get those returns and double your money, the higher interest rate, obviously you have to weigh your risk. And you can also use that formula and work backwards. So you can say, hey, I need to double my, I'm really old, I need to double my money every six years. Okay, if I need to double my money every six years, what rate of return do I need to get? You're just going to do 72 Mm -hmm. divided by six, 12 years. Mm -hmm. Just a good little formula to use and to be thinking about kind of along those same lines. So that just remember that the compounded interest is just your money making money and that money making more money. Mm -hmm. So uh, your curve steepens the lot, the further out you go, the further out you go, Mm -hmm. the steeper your curve gets, the more advantage you have. So start early and save long. Mm 